In this video, we'll be working on the homework, the second homework sheet for reciprocal of linear functions. So basically, your job is to fill in the table and complete the graph. Now, I didn't specify the order in which you need to do it. So you could obviously fill in the table first and then do the graph, but I find it much easier if you're just to do the graph quickly and then look at the graph and fill in the table. So that's what I did. So what I did was um, find out the asymptotes and the intercepts, which luckily is very, very easy to find. To find X and Y intercept, hopefully should not take you more than 20 seconds. Finding the vertical asymptote should not take you more than 10 seconds. And the horizontal asymptote is always Y equals zero. So, well, because we're working with just reciprocal linear functions. So that's very straightforward as well. So knowing that the asymptotes are here, and that the y-intercept is here, um, this must be the graph I have. Okay, so using the graph, I filled in the whole table. Okay, so I'll let you look at the table here. So found the behavior near the vertical asymptote. So approach the, um, uh, approach the vertical asymptote from the left side and the right side. And one of two things can happen. It either goes up towards positive infinity or down to negative infinity. Um, one thing I forgot to mention in the in the lesson is that for whatever reason, students always confuse these two: behavior near vertical asymptote and end behavior. They're very very different. But I, I don't know it's the the confusion with the notation or something. But the students always get confused. Oh, I forgot to mention that as you go negative infinity, it's zero from above. And zero from below. So I think it's because of these superscripts, uh, students get confused, but behavior near vertical asymptote is what's happening when I approach the vertical asymptote from the left side and the right side. Now end behavior is when I'm approaching the far right of the graph and for the far left of the graph. Okay, so if you really, you know, repeat to yourself, they're, they're very, very different. What happens when I approach a vertical asymptote from left and right? And what happens when I go to the far right and the far left of the graph? So very, very different. So take your time um, and really notice the difference between the two ideas. But like I said before, I would argue a large chunk of students get these two concepts confused. Anyways, um, domain range, interval of increase, decrease, where it's positive and negative. All this, the whole table can be easily filled in once you have the graph. So I highly recommend to fill the draw the graph first and then fill in the table. Now, like I said before, if someone simply asked me what's the behavior in your vertical asymptote given f of x, then I would just uh, answer that question algebraically and without the graph. Okay, so okay, so this f of x equals uh, negative one over x plus five. So this is the table. Okay. And go back up to the top. All right, and then this is my graph. My scaling was a little weird, but uh, I try to make it simple. I try to keep it simple, and uh, I didn't want to have my points too far off the x and y axis. But your graph might look different because of the scaling. All right. Uh, two more graphs left, so same strategy. I did the graph, and then I filled in the table. And it's a good time to mention the strategy used when I um, graph any type of rational function will be very similar to what I did in this in this uh, lesson with rational with reciprocal of linear functions. I take a look at the asymptotes, take a look at the intercepts, and really, there's only so many things that can happen. There's there's really just one correct graph. So knowing that. I can piece it together. It's like a little jigsaw puzzle. Okay, so hopefully your answers match up and um, we'll move on to reciprocal of quadratic functions.